Chicken 65 and potato are mixed together, stuffed in a homemade crepe, dipped in a flour batter and then dredged in breadcrumbs before frying. I will start with the potato. I like to have a higher ratio of potato to mutton in my rolls. It helps to shape it, but it also absorbs all of those spices and keeps a check on the spice level. I have 600 grams of potato and I will just boil this till it's tender. To make the chicken 65, I've cut one pound of boneless chicken into very, very small pieces. Add salt to taste, two tablespoons of ginger and garlic paste, one tablespoon of red chili powder, two tablespoons of cornstarch, and one egg. Mix this well together. I've made chicken 65 many, many times on my channel, but this recipe is slightly modified to pack way more punch as it will be mixed with mashed potato later. I have oil heating up and I will cook the chicken till it's crispy and well done. Remove these and keep them aside. Heat up some oil and add one cup of finely minced onion. Add three tablespoons of sliced green chilies. You can add a bit less if you want to cut down the spice. One cup of curry leaves. I cut this with a scissors. One tablespoon of chili powder. One tablespoon of cumin powder. One teaspoon of black pepper salt to taste and I'm going to mix it. Add three tablespoons of ginger and garlic paste as well as three tablespoons of chili paste or sambal olek. It's not chicken 65 without the classic red color. So I'm going to be using about a quarter teaspoon of food coloring and I've just dissolved it in a little bit of water. I'm going to add this in and mix it. Tip in all the chicken and now mix it together with this beautiful red gravy. Add some coriander, mix again and now I'm going to keep it aside. Mash the potato and add in all of the chicken mixture and mix this well together. Add a bit more coriander and allow it to cool. To make the crepes, I'm going to start with two cups of all-purpose sifted flour and I've got three cups of water. I'm going to be adding the water a little bit at a time, beating as I go to make sure there's no lumps in the batter. I'm also going to add two eggs in between. I'm going to use most of this water and I'm going to save about half a cup for later as the batter will start to thicken as it sits. The batter should have a consistency of a light cream. Save about a cup of this batter for later. To make the crepes, this is the process I like to follow. I have my batter, my cup measurement, a non-stick pan, and I have a chopping board that I've covered with a tea towel. I also have some oil. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the hot pan and I will use about a quarter cup of the batter. Add it straight into the hot pan and swirl it all around to coat. I'm going to allow this to cook and then I'm just going to take the pan, flip it over and tap it on the board to release the crepe. Keep doing this, cooking the crepes on one side. 
I will also be transferring the crepes to another surface where they can cool completely. To stuff the rolls, place the crepe cook side down. Depending on the size of your crepe, I'm going to add 1 to 2 tablespoons of the filling. Form this into a log, fold in the sides of the crepe and then pull the top over and roll. Since one side is sticky, you wouldn't need to worry about adding anything to seal it. I will roll and prepare all of the rolls before the next step. To make this easy, I will first dip the crepes in the batter that I've reserved and I'm going to place them on a wire rack. Of course, not everyone has a wire rack. I'm just using this as the excess batter can drip off before I go to the next step. Step of course is to dredge it in breadcrumbs. I will use a total of one and a half to two cups of breadcrumbs. I like to work on breading this in batches so the batter is just sticky enough to hold the breadcrumbs. This is just a technique that I like to work with. It optimizes my time but you can totally just dip it in batter, allow it to drain and then dredge it in the breadcrumbs before frying. Once all are done, I'll just give each roll another once over in the breadcrumbs just in case there are any bald spots and also to roll them back into a cylinder shape. Add them to the hot oil and once they're nice and golden brown, I will remove them and drain them on some kitchen towel. These are perfectly spiced, nice and crispy, and will be loved by all. Enjoy!